Well, that was probably one of the best races we've had in years. I would say that was getting up there in top 10 races of all time. We saw the top three of Perez, Leclerc, and Piastri do qualifying laps for what looked like about two thirds of the race. They were just on it. And within eight tenths of each other to 1.5 seconds, pretty much from lap like 22, whenever they pitted, all the way through. Like crazy, crazy qualifying lap times from all three of those. The result, not what we expected either. As we look through the top 10, we see Piastri Leclerc, Russell Norris, Verstappen, Alonso Albon, Colapinto, Hamilton, and Behrman. So very mixed up uh, top 10. But let's go through some of the bigger stories and try to break down what happened through this whole race. So as we see the constructor standings, McLaren has a past Red Bull and not by a little bit, by a lot. I think Red Bull is really going to be looking not ahead, but behind to Ferrari. If we see what we saw from Ferrari today, that wasn't a fluke at Monza. In my opinion, I think they're still probably really, really, it would be really hard to tell which one is faster, Ferrari or McLaren, as far as speed of the car goes. Whatever those uh, upgrades from Ferrari were, they were amazing because as of today, I, I would personally argue that they're back on top. I think they are. Uh, they just seem faster. And it was only because Piastri had an amazing driving. He didn't make any mistakes for literally like 30 some laps. There's nothing you could say about that kid. It's only his second year and he's got two wins in Formula One. I believe that he is showing himself, and he was so calm, showing himself to be, he's gonna be one of the next world champions. And if he's not, it'll only be down to dumb luck. So Piastri, number one, uh, driver of the day as well. That's who I voted for. That was an amazing drive. Great strategy on the mediums. He did everything he can to last as long. Uh, Leclerc put out six seconds of a gap on the mediums. If this had been a, me a two-stop medium-medium race, I think Leclerc probably would have won handily. Uh, but the, the hard tires really did do bad for Leclerc. And as soon as he got behind Piastri, there's nothing he can do about it. Now, he ended up getting behind pa Piastri and Perez not being able to pass because of this. Lando Norris, this is a set, uh, funny little meme, but he uh, he spent so long on those hard tires and really made that hard medium strategy work. And he held up Perez at the critical time when Piastri came in. So this man came in from 15th to 4th, helped his teammate and passed Max Verstappen all in the same race. I mean, there are tons of people who don't like Lando Norris and don't think he's uh, a worthy champion if he does win the championship this year but you can't fault him this time. He did everything right except for qualifying and he maximized everything there. I thought that Verstappen would finish fifth and Lando about eighth. We saw all that accidents and stuff, but Lando passed Verstappen coming all the way back. Now that speaks a lot to how bad the drive Verstappen was having with that awful, awful car. Same with Perez too, they were dealing with so many issues. But the fact that he was able to help out his teammate and I think that was as much of a, a McLaren win as it was a Piastri win because uh, that critical time that he held up, uh, Perez really left Piastri to push it to Leclerc. Now Leclerc's times on the uh, on the hard tires was appalling at the very start there. He had really suffered with a lot of problems when it came to graining. We're gonna go in and do bulk temperature stuff in a little bit here and we're gonna analyze that down at the very end of this video. If you wanna see that, skip ahead to the end. Aside from that, let's keep going. We have P2 for Leclerc. I think he did a lot of good stuff there. It was really sad to see him behind, stuck behind Piastri. The issue that he had was drive. He could not, he was so good through the straight and he was as slippery as the McLaren. Maybe not just a little bit less uh, considering he had DRS, but he would continue to get there and it looked like he would be able to get the move done in corner two or three, but his drive out of those corners was so bad in dirty air. Uh, he could not get the power down. And eventually, I want to say three laps from the end, probably like lap 48 or 49, just before the incident that Perez and Sainz had, his rear tires fell off big time. And that's what happened to let Perez catch up to him and to let Sainz catch up to both of them. All that fighting that was going on and his tire, his rear tires died. And I believe that's because he was sitting in dirty air for 30 laps. And every time he came out of corner two and three, 
he really, really destroyed his rear tires. A little bit too much spinning there going on, and really that wear that was going down really affected him into the last three laps. He, the tires actually hit a wall. We didn't see that in Monza because he was out front, just driving all on his own. He was able to hold onto his wear, but because he was pushing with those three top drivers in the front for so long, the Pirelli tires finally hit their wall and they died. Piastri gained four, three, four seconds in the last couple laps before the science in, uh, Perez incident. And that was because Leclerc's rear tires died. Wonderful drive from him. Super happy for him. Russell is always in the po How does he get so many podiums? He finishes so well this year just for being super consistent and not really getting into a mix with anything. Doing very well. Excellent. Great for Mercedes. Great to see them up there taking advantage of other mistakes from other drivers. Hamilton, on the other hand, I don't know what happened. You saw Norris push through the field, no problems whatsoever. And we'll get talking about the graining again at the end of the video, but I believe what was really the wrong with Hamilton's car was thermal damage uh, from the tires. Whatever setup he had seemed to have a lot more degradation on his tires, and there was really nothing he could do to get that thing around the track. He sat in the mid-teens while Lando Norris push from p12 all the way up to p4 uh, and we've seen in the past where hamilton we saw at silverstone hamilton was faster if not on par with the mclarens there so I, I don't know if it's the messing around with the floor that they've been doing for so long now same as red bull but really a lot of a uh, lot of difficulty for hamilton bad to see there though i will make one note the race director really really likes to watch hamilton when he's in 15th place when all of this crazy stuff is happening everywhere else i don't necessarily always agree with British bias, uh, but I would like to see that the race director just stop watching Hamilton fighting with Ollie Behrman at 15th place halfway through the race. There's so much else going on. It was action packed the whole way through. Let's get into Red Bull. Max P5. Otherwise, he would have been P7 if it wasn't for the incident. DNF for Checo. We'll start off talking with Max first. He was nowhere. Sliding, understeer, oversteer, no pace on either tire. There was a point that I have here Norris, when he was on hard tires on lap seven, lap seven, he was doing faster times than Max on the medium tire and Norris was on the hard tire and he was doing faster times. And I don't mean on one lap, I mean consistently faster times on the hard tire. And if it wasn't for that, he probably wouldn't have caught him at the end. So one stop preferred from Pirelli. It seemed like they stuck with that. If things had been a little bit more broken up in the front, like if Leclerc had taken off, I think we would have saw a two-stop strategy because those tires on the top three were dead by the end. Uh, it just goes to show how good those hard tires are uh, in comparison to wear, and really not necessarily wear, but the speed difference. The mediums, once you put them on, unless you were like Albon and Norris and you stayed out so much longer on the hards and were able to keep that degradation down, the mediums just weren't that much faster. We saw lap times from the top three on really old tires being able to keep that pace up just from being in sort of clean air. Interesting uh, to see all of that. We also saw the McLaren, and I think one of the biggest things, and we've seen this for years, and I mention it every time we see it, McLaren is very fast on low fuel. As the race progressed on, especially through the middle stint of the race, the McLaren gets really fast. And we've seen this since 21 or 22. Uh, whatever suspension geometry they run in that car, it really does help them on low fuel. They, uh, they get faster and faster as the fuel load goes on. So lap 22 is kind of when crazy stuff happened. Uh, Perez, Piastri, and Leclerc all destroying their tires from lap 22. I'm talking about lap after lap after lap. And what ended up happening is Carlos Sainz just kind of hanging around on its own, same as Alonso, who did very well this race, just out of nowhere, all by themselves, kind of driving around. But what that allowed Sainz to do is not destroy his tires like the top three. And he came from about eight or nine seconds back all the way up to Perez by three laps before the end of the race, or lap, lap 48, 49, just as uh, Lando was passing Verstappen for sixth place at the time. So we have here uh, this little incident. I will try to play this out. I don't want to get dinged from the FOM, so we'll only watch little bits. But I keep it on Perez. Now we saw at this point, he's alongside Sainz here. And Sainz does drift left. I, I, will, I will preface this by saying I believe this was a race incident. It is still up in debate. We have the document to have Carlos Sainz and 
uh, Perez called to the stewards for breaching Appendix L. I don't know what the hell Appendix L is. I can only imagine it's not respecting other races, uh, drivers space. But we saw this several times from Piastri and Leclerc. And this is why I believe that Piastri and Leclerc are, that's where this level of driver ahead of drivers like this are. They have the wherewithal to know what the other guy is doing and really be concentrate on that. We saw it, I th I'm gonna say about six to eight times. After turn one, Piastri would come across and squeeze Leclerc out. And Leclerc would be like, oh yeah, he's gonna squeeze me several times at several different points, at several points where Leclerc was along him. And he was in this position exactly like this. He was alongside him and you know what he's gonna do. He's gonna squeeze you down. He's going to try to run you out of room on the road. And he is technically ahead, so you can't just drive straight. If you drive straight, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna have an accident. And he knows that, and Leclerc moves over to the left. They do their little squeezing maneuver, and they continue to go by. And this is why Carlos Sainz and Perez aren't necessarily on that same kind of level. What we end up seeing here is Carlos Sainz did exactly what per, uh, Piastri did six or seven times to Leclerc. He pushes him across. He starts to close that little gap a little bit. He's just, he's just pushing across very, very slowly. There's none of this kind of stuff. It's just ever so slightly. I would say about one to two degrees on his wheel. He's not turning into him. He's just running him out of room. And what does Perez do? Look at that steering wheel. See that little jut? Look at that little jut. Watch his steering wheel. Just a little bit to the right there. Just a little bit. He's he's going like this. He's at worst driving absolutely straight. And what's going to happen? Well, you're behind. The other guy's coming across to run you out of room, just like every other driver does, and he has an accident. I would hope that the stewards wouldn't call this anything but a racing incident, but you never know. They might see it from a different point of view. I would say racing input goes, not Perez's fault. 100% not Perez's fault for the incident. But it, do you want to finish in the top four or top three? Do you want to be on the podium? Turn left a little bit. You're going to have to. Otherwise, you're going to have an accident. So avoidable action by Perez would have mean that he probably could have dived up the inside and kept it into turn two and maybe come in second in the race or third or fourth or not last. He, he didn't fit any points. This is critical for him. This is the race that he needed to show to Red Bull that he still has the stuff. Did he show to Red Bull he still has the stuff? Of course he did. Did he gain any points? When you remember back five years from now and you look at the paper and you see DNF, are you gonna remember that Perez was actually doing really well until he made a little bit of a mistake on three laps for the end of the race? No, you're gonna see DNF and you'll be like, wow, he's a shit driver. So really what he needs to do is he needs to try to haul in as many points as he can. He needs to show the team that on paper he's doing better. He just didn't do it. And same thing from Carlos Sainz. He needs to show to everybody that he is a top driver. And he's squeezing people in the last couple ra uh, laps from the end of the race when he could have finished on podium. I think he had the tires to do it. If this hadn't happened, I believe Perez would have finished fourth. Carlos had so much more tires in the end of the race there. So damage to limitation, it should have been from Perez. And instead, he ends up with zero points and another black mark on his current streak of black marks. Uh, he has one more race at Singapore, in my opinion, to do a little bit better. Uh, again, he was excellent this weekend right up till the end of this race. Okay, so we'll, we'll let's check out what we see if we see any results from this. Led safety car infringement, 27, car one, safety car infringement from summons for Max. That's interesting. Alleged pit lane infringement for McLaren. Original, so we haven't seen anything from here. Let's take a look at what this is. Pit lane during race. Oh, that's probably cheering for Piastri on the wall. Safety car infringement for 27. I don't know who car 27 is. Nico Hulkenberg. Overtaking under virtual safety car. Hmm, interesting. And then car one, overtaking under virtual safety car conditions. Hmm, also interesting. So we ended up finishing under virtual safety car. There was a no, no point. So that's pretty interesting. I don't think we'll see anything from that. We'll keep going. Uh, so I just think uh, Perez and Sainz, real messy from both of them, to be perfectly honest. Not becoming of top team drivers. Uh, that's my final opinion on that. Racing incident, both of them a little messy. And and I, I don't see anything else from that. Colapinto P8. Uh, he is officially 19 
out of 22 drivers that have raced so far this season. So he's doing really good. He has four points. If he finishes again in the points, he's going to jump up to like P15, P14 or so as far as the championship points goes because there's a whole heck gaggle of people with under 10 points, right? So absolutely amazing. I am torn uh, because I would really like to see Colapinto in... Formula One next year, I think he has shown, like, Sargent has one point over his two years. Colapinto already has four, and he's only been in driving for for two races. Again, I'll say exactly like I said last time, the cutthroatness of Williams is paying off. They got four championship points out of Colapinto so far. And what did Red Bull get from Perez? Nothing this race. Absolutely zero. Great drive from Alex, too. Uh, he was just like... Norris, and he stayed out on those, that hard to medium strategy, and he kind of was a little bit all on his own for a lot of the race. He had held up uh, McLaren and uh, in Norris and Verstappen for a while, came in a little bit earlier than Norris, uh, but he didn't, the car doesn't really have that speed. That's what happened. Alex came in and Norris stayed out for an extra four laps and was able to build that gap to Alonso. Unfortunately, Albon got caught up in the Behrman, Hulkenberg, Alonso, all that kind of stuff there. So he lost out about 14 seconds dealing with all that nonsense, but still a great drive. And there was actually a funny meme about this. And it was Albon's like, oh God, while well, all of these other guys around him are just going absolutely insane. Um, and he ended up beating out a lot of them just because staying out of the way. Now, Ollie Berman, P10, very good. So uh, first driver to ever do that, to show up one time, uh, at least in modern day formula that I can think of, show up one time for two different teams and get points for both of them. Now, how did he get there? Because at one point in time, he was in 12th. He was behind Hulkenberg and he had Hamilton all over the back of them. But the safety car at the very end is what happened. This is the program that I use to look at different notes and different things that are going on during the race. Also, mul multiple views. So not sure what the problem is with Nico's car. You can see there. And then I hit something big with the front wing. Okay, we're checking. So just as that uh, virtual safety car thing was going on, I think Nico hit some damage that happened from Perez and uh, Science's crash. And that meant that he fell back and that Oli Beerman passed him sometime around when that virtual safety car was coming in. Not quite sure. They weren't that far behind. So it looked like... Nico lost a whole bunch of positions like that. So again, we'll update this one more time. Virtual safety car infringement for 31 and 10 as well. I don't know these car numbers either. Article for Esteban Ocon. And the last one, Pierre Gasly. So it looks like all of this kind of stuff under virtual safety car. Not really sure what all that's about, but Okay, let's take a look at tire degradation. This race and all of Monza was all about tire degradation. This is paint. Well, it's like paint plus with Krita. It's a, a program that I use for editing. So let's look at tire degradation and let's understand what happened with some of these cars. Um, an example, these are, these are three kind of conditions that you can get from cars driving around the track with issues that they'll have with their tires. They're, the conditions vary. This is not just three things that'll happen. There's varying wear from all the different uh, dry, different cars, different drivers, how they handle it, different tires, aero setups, all that kind of stuff. But these are three kind of main conditions that you'll see people mention. Good wear. Good wear is when you have the inside bulk temperatures. That would be this part here on the inside. When you have in good inside bulk temperatures and good outside temperatures and you get good wear. This was Leclerc on the medium tires. He had his tire temperatures, inside bulk temperatures and outside temperatures synced up really good. This is where we saw him pull away six seconds in the first stint. This is not Hamilton in the first sector, section on his tires. He was having huge thermal in injury into the tires. Same with Piastri, same with Max Verstappen, same with uh, a lot of other drivers. Norris, also good on both the mediums and the hard. He had good wear on both of them, especially on the hard tires. He lasted Albon, ex excellent wear on his tires. And that's because they were mostly not fighting with anybody on their own, doing their own thing, able to control that uh, wear on the tires. Hot, cold graining, there is a difference between the two, but the result is basically the same. Your inside temperature here is lower than your outside temperature. I hope that gets that gets that across with the color, but your inside temperature is here is much lower than your outside temperature. 
Now this can be because your inside temperature is just too cold. We saw this at really cold races, Las Vegas last year. Um, Spa was very cold this year. We see a lot of the tire temperature on the inside. If there's too many straights, your tire temperatures will, will drop down and combine that with really heavy corners. So that's basically Monza and Baku in a nutshell. Uh, Baku is a little bit cooler as far as track temperature goes. So you see a lot of uh, damage to the tires because of graining. And what ends up happening here is this little part that you see here, the makeup of the tire. You'll also see some delamination down here when it comes to the carcass and the Kevlar belts and stuff that are inside these. In here is what happens, and you'll see this kind of stuff. As soon as you go around the corner, the top tire of the temperature has super high temperatures, and the inside is still cold. And you'll see delamination in between those two uh, parts of the tire. And this, actually, you'll get wear that'll come down because you're just scrubbing off that top. It's like a creme brulee on the top, very hot. And the inside temperature is very cold. So you get this kind of stuff as you go across the corner. And you can actually see those strakes on the tire if you look at them. If you see a tire that's been changed out, it's diagonal kind of cirations across the top and it's just scraping and it's delaminating. Now you can burn through this, especially cold graining where it's mostly that the inside temperature is super cold and the outside temperature is green in this case it's not that hot but what ends up happening is you can actually if you're really easy on the corners and you're easy on wheel spin you can actually get back into this good wear situation where the, the the temperatures are at least lined up it might be a little bit too cold or a little bit too hot but at least you'll get the tire temperatures lined up where you're not getting this crazy graining today though especially on the medium tires for a lot of people we saw thermal damage what is thermal damage? Everything's hot. The inside temperature is hot and the outside temperature is even hotter. And what does this mean? Well, you don't get delamination. These two parts still stick together quite well. You get a little bit, but not as bad as with cold or hot graining. But what ends up happening is that wear is super duper high. Very, very high. This is what the tire you would almost want it to look like somewhere in between thermal damage and good wear for a quali tire and that's why they don't last very long because the whole thing is heated up everything's super sticky and your tire wear is super high we saw uh, in qualifying yesterday that they were getting two laps out of their soft tires which is pretty good we didn't expect to see the hard and medium tires experience so much thermal damage and this is what happened to leclerc's rear tires he had so much thermal damage that the wear eventually got to the point where they were into that carcass area. All of this part of the tire was wearing down as it was going on. And he got to the point where there isn't enough tire left to create those bulk temperatures. This area here, once you get down so far, there isn't enough tire to generate temperatures. So what ends up happening is that everything becomes cold. It's all going to be blue because there is just no outside of the tire left. There's not much inside of the tire left and you just get cold tires and you just start to spin and spin and spin and spin and spin. And that's how Perez and Science both caught him at the very end there. Now he ended up finishing it off because they had an awful accident. This was a big, big issue and I foresee that we're going to see this a little bit more through the end of the year especially on larger tracks uh las vegas it's going to be cold graining where everything's just too cold we saw that last year where the temperatures are just too low for operational issues and if we see a really cold day in november in las vegas keep in mind it can snow in november in las vegas so that would be an interesting see to see i assume that they would cancel the race if we got down below Eight degrees is about as far as you can push these guys. We've seen in the past them doing uh, winter testing in Spain and getting down into the single digits and things just not working anymore. So that's about where these tires no longer operate to the point where it's actually dangerous. You cannot generate, can't go fast enough to generate temperatures to get the temperature of the tire up past its operational of eight to 10 degrees. We saw last year about 12 to 14 at Las Vegas. We're also gonna see this at Cota because it has a really long straight. And during that long straight, you're not increasing your bulk temperatures. The tire temperature drops down. And once you get to the corner, all that tire temperature gets cirated off the top and you'll see cold and hot graining at Cota. It depends on how warm it's gonna be there, whether it's cold or hot graining. So this is what happened during this race and why it was so exciting because these guys at the front were causing huge thermal damage because they were on quality laps 
for 30 laps they were going along doing quality laps and just destroyed their tires and it was whoever could not destroy it first it was always going to be leclerc especially if he was in second because when you follow the car in front you have a lot less downforce because of dirty air washing off the car and his rear tires were spinning up in turn one two and three because he was still trying to push on personally if i was ferrari I think he had the faster car today, back off to three seconds behind, hang out there for 20 laps, then give that push. And he could have pushed into the very end and maybe had a better chance of getting by Piastri with his overall speed, and he wouldn't have had the damaged tires to do it. Unfortunately, they took the other strategy where they were trying to push Piastri to make a mistake. That's not a bad strategy, seeing as Piastri is still a new-ish driver. But I think they underestimated how good Piastri is and how good he is under pressure. Anybody else, I believe, would have had some sort of issue there where they would have been pushed to make a mistake. Piastri, though, no mistakes. And he killed his thermal damage better than Leclerc, who, in my opinion, is probably one of the best on the grid, along with probably Hamilton, Norris, Max... Okay, so that's it from Azerbaijan. Great race. I think we're going to let things settle, and then we're going to do an aftermath video. Uh, we're going to see a lot from the Red Bulls. A lot of bad things come out of what they had to say. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second, and I'll see you guys next time.